is the payoff in the hog business, the market. Here the hog man gets paid for his months of labor, his management, his judgment, and his capital. The market is the end of the line for the hog raiser. Frank Farmer seems happy as he pockets his check and heads back home. He has reason to be happy. He sold what the market is looking for, meat type hogs. There are thousands of hog raisers in Illinois and many of them are on the market today. But not all will be as happy as Frank Farmer. Some hogs are simply not worth as much pound for pound as others. This is the story of the hogs that are worth more money. The story of meat type hogs. The size of the payoff and the hog man's pleasure depends on many things, most of which happen long before the hogs reach market. Such things as selection of breeding stock and how well the baby pigs are fed and cared for until they become full grown hogs and are ready for market. Here's another load of hogs that will make the farmer happy. And these are hogs the buyers like to see too. Take a good look at them as they come off the truck. They're not over fat, but are long and meaty with a well-rounded turn over the loin. This type of hog gives a high percentage of the lean cuts. Buyers from several companies will look them over and buyers know hogs and bidding against each other they find out what these hogs are worth. To see how important hog raising is to Illinois farmers look at this chart. Almost one-fourth of the total cash farm income comes from hogs. Here's another familiar everyday scene. The American housewife shopping. She's the person everyone in the meat industry, producer, packer, retailer, is trying to please. Let's follow this determined young lady past the meat counter, where there are all kinds of meat, each competing for her attention. What does she buy? Not the ham slice with all the fat that will fry away in drippings. She doesn't want these pork chops, not enough lean meat. and she is passing up the pork roast with too much fat. But here's something she likes, and the pork industry has lost another sale. Fat pork has been losing in popularity. Quality today means lean pork. Pork with only enough fat for flavor and tenderness. Years ago, hard labor called for energy, which pork fat supplied so well. But today, in all lines of work, many jobs are done by machines. It doesn't take as much human energy to operate a machine as it does to wield a shovel. We've been losing in popularity to the improved vegetable fats. Improved lard has regained a little of the market, but still faces keen competition. Huge quantities of pork fat formerly ended up in soap, and we all know the story of the rapid rise of detergents. Solution to this problem lies in producing a meat type hog. A hog that will yield a lot of lean meat and relatively little fat. This is a meat type gilt. She's of moderate length, has a trim underline and around the jowl. Notice the tail head when you look at a hog. If the tail head is countersunk as it is here, the hog is too fat. On the meat type hog, the tail head sets well out on the body, showing that the hog is carrying a lot of muscling and not too much fat. The meat type hog on the right has a gradual arch over the loin. Compare this turn with the broad flat arch on the fat hog. A broad flat arch is one sign of too much fat in proportion to lean. The meat type hog is longer than the fat hog, but still not extremely long. Compare the length of the meat type hog with that of the fat hog. The short hog has to put on a high proportion of fat to reach market weight. Proof of the pig, of course, is in the carcass. Let's examine the sides from the same two hogs. The side on the right is from the meat type hog and the side on the left from the fat hog. You'll notice that both carcasses are firm, but the side on the right will give more of the lean cuts. 
Measured from the point of the H bone to the first rib, this hog is 30 and a half inches long. Back fat is important too. It's measured first over the first rib. Then over the last rib. And finally, over the last lumbar vertebra. This measuring can be done on the live hog too. It's a painless process. This meat type hog had an average back fat thickness of 1.5 inches and was 30.5 inches long. Back fat and length are not important in themselves, but they give an accurate indication of what proportion of the hog will be lean meat. Now compare the meat type carcass with the fat carcass being measured. Length from the point of the H bone to the front of the first rib is 28 inches, which is two and a half inches shorter than the meat type hog. Notice how uneven the back fat is on the fat hog. It's much thicker, averaging 2.1 inches, more than one half inch thicker than that of the meat type hog. In other words, the fat hog has a much heavier and a much more uneven covering of fat than the meat type hog. Now take a look at the four lean cuts from the two hogs. Those from the fat hog are on the left. Those from the meat type hog on the right. And here is the fat trimmed from one side of each of the hogs. Again, that on the left is from the over fat hog. Here's a quick summary of the two carcasses. The meat type hog was 30 and a half inches long compared to 28 inches for the fat hog. Back fat thickness an inch and a half compared to over two inches. 50% of live weight in lean cuts compared to only 40%. Only 17% fat compared to almost 25%. Now for some other comparisons. First, the picnic hams or shoulders. Notice the fat in the lean in the picnic ham on the left, which is from the over fat hog. Next, the two loins. The meat type loin has a bigger eye muscle and less fat covering than that of the over fat hog. The loin from the fat hog is kidney shaped and is carrying too much fat to be suitable for the American housewife. Notice the fat in the lean, internal fat. Extra fat shows up more in the loin than in any other cut. Now the ham slices. Notice the grease on the right, which came from another similar fat ham slice. Can you blame the alert shopper for picking up some other type of meat if she can't find good lean pork? Other meats are good and pork must meet the competition. It will take cooperation all along the line from feedlot to supermarket. Buyers are helping solve the problem by bidding more for the hogs that will dress out a high proportion of lean meat. By paying more for the meat type hog. The meat type hog is worth more and for the same reason, the fat type hog is worth correspondingly less. This is the first step, providing an incentive in dollars and cents to the American hog producer for putting a hog on the market that will meet today's demands. If you are producing hogs, your first step is to buy a meat type boar, which you can find in every breed. Wherever you find him, he must be long and rugged with a good deal of growth and size. Look at this meat type boar. Notice the length of his body and the turn over his loin. This boar is well developed and is a type you can get if you look for him. If you can, buy a production tested boar. A lean meter is a good and painless way to measure back fat thickness. Next step is to select a good meat type gilt. A meat type gilt, like the boar, is long and rugged and growthy. She has a good turn over the loin. Notice the well developed ham. You can find meat type gilts in all breeds too. If you raise your own gilts, save them from growthy, rugged, big litters. Meat type hogs are as easy and as cheap to produce as are the fat hogs, or any other kind as these figures show. Meat type hogs had almost the same average daily gain, and they put on a pound of meat for almost exactly the same amount of feed.
The pork industry has been good to Corn Belt farmers. It provides one of the largest markets for our corn. It behooves farmers, packers, and retailers to do a good job of producing and selling meat-type hogs. The housewife will buy pork when she can get what she wants. When she can find lean ham in the meat markets, she'll buy ham. She'll buy pork chops too, but she wants the good lean pork chops. And she'll buy pork roasts, but they must have quality. The meat type hog is the answer to better pork in the meat markets and more satisfied frank farmers at the livestock markets. <laughs>